All right, so we're just going to uh, resume, and I, I guess uh, here in uh, this way, we'll kind of um, I'm going to sh show you uh, a few more quick tricks in Rhino, and uh, I think uh, also going to uh, I'm going to show you a few quick tr tricks in Rhino now, but also we're going to uh, test the limits of what this this method can do, because um, there's also other methods where you can bring things in just as meshes or other kinds of objects which you can't really create building information modeling elements as you could have it there physically but it won't have information so um, we're gonna right now I, I've I've tested the limits a bit but we're gonna just experiment here for a little bit so if you guys want to go back into uh, Rhino uh, it's not necessary we're just gonna do some kind of crazy crazy forms now and see what happens in in Revit. So we're going to do a bit of, a little bit of testing um, here for the last uh, 15 minutes that we have. So uh, what I've done here uh, is I've just actually will we'll review this, just draw like a, a polygon and I have a, a pentagon set up right now. So just setting one up this size, you know, pull it over here pull it over here kind of close to that form we'll just bring it into the same file but we're gonna uh, I'm gonna type in uh, copy and then I'm gonna t hit vertical here and let's send that up a hundred feet and uh, now I'm gonna uh, sh show you guys kind of an interesting trick that you have in Rhino if you uh, want to type in history uh, go up here and change. Uh, you can click kicking, clicking on these options, but tell it to record and update. Uh, no need to lock, but uh, and also you can keep the broken history warning on. So record yes, update yes, and then hit enter. And so then we're just going to uh, select these two polygons and do a loft in between them, and. It should come out pretty simple, like that kind of form. And uh, now, what this what this history command does is uh, it makes it so that when you modify the two D the two D forms that you use to create these three D forms, it automatically updates it. So let's say we wanted to uh, rotate. And if you hit center, you can rotate right along the center of this polygon. Uh, let's say let's rotate this 30 degrees. I don't know why that broke. But let's... Oh, a reason why that broke is that this is now different from this, which was a copy. Um, but let's not worry about that because you'll see right now we, all you're worrying about is updating these 3D forms. So now we have so now we have this form. Um, if you, oh sorry, if you um, you just have this form selected up here, type in rotate, or you can um, type in yeah, or you can hit one of the buttons. But I'm not sure if you guys' toolbars are all maintained because they seem to have changed recently. So if you just type in rotate, you can do that. And then if you have um, down here at the bottom, if you want to select the center to rotate it around, you just have to click center under your uh, your snap bars down at the bottom here. And then you can uh, type in rotate. And when you kind of drag near the actual form, it'll select center. And so we have this twisting form. And we're just going to uh, cap that, and don't worry about this. So we have this general form, and uh, I'm also going to do a uh, a curvy form just to see uh, how this how this will work. So let's just draw a box over here. Sorry, you can come in. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine.
And um, so now let's just explode this box and we're going to... Uh, actually, let's uh, forget that for a second. Let's uh, just do um, a general uh, rectilinear form. So let's just say planar surface. Oops. Actually, I forget how to... Yeah, let's just do a rectangle, and then we'll do a planar surface from that. So we have this rectangle, and now we'll do a planar surface. And so uh, if you guys uh, remember the... Remember uh, this kind of move, we can just draw this. We can draw a line right here, and if you could select that, we can type in rebuild, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but we can change the amount of uh, points that are used to make up this line, and the degree is how it can bend. So if you um, if you have a degree like three, it actually can become a curve, whereas a degree like one, it will just go straight to that line. So let's do um, with three points and a degree of three, and then you can uh, turn the points on by typing points on. And let's just move this vertically just so we have some interesting form here. Same with this. And now let's type in this and we'll extrude curve along curve. And we can delete that and this. And now we have this interesting form, and we're going to move it vertically as well. Don't worry about the broken history command. Um, and then we can uh, take this form and use it to trim this form. And then we can use this form to trim this one and we can join them again. And we have uh, the, a unique form on top. And we'll just try exporting this now. And I'm going to drag this over into uh, the folder for you guys. And so let's go back uh, into Revit, and let's do a new uh, a new in place mass. Uh, we're just gonna do the crazy mass, and uh, let's insert again. Link the CAD. I'm going to do it to origin to origin so it doesn't come in the same spot. And here we have this pretty unique form. So let's finish the mass. Now, once again, we could select this and go over to massing in sight or modify mass and do uh, the mass floors and select all of them. So there we go, now you have all these mass floors and this kind of a little tower-like kind of thing we're turning on, but let's see how well it works with actually uh, setting up uh, walls or to model uh, walls from the, from the surfaces. So we're gonna, we'll go with uh, brick so that we can see what it's doing. And let's see, uh, finish face interior. Let's see how this turns out.
So we'll see it actually uh, managed to work here. And let's see if we can uh, model a roof from that, though. And this actually seemed to work out all right. So let's hide this mass now. You see, we actually created this. And we have the mass floors in there, but you'll see that this is a pretty uh, complex form. And uh, I mean, we actually have uh, these real walls. It's just a, a matter of how much it actually works. But let's try and put a door in there. Seems to have some kind of troubles with that. Whoa. Seems to have made the uh, whole wall disappear by just putting a door in there. So, you'll see that there's these limitations when you get forms that are too crazy. Um, that seemed to work all right. Um, just depending on uh, what you set up and how you do it. It could work out all right. Maybe uh, doors just seem to have more issues. Oh, that one actually worked. There we go. Oh, see, it seems to be a. It seems to work. It's just a visual visualization problem every once in a while, I guess. So let's see what this uh, floor plans at level one look like. You can see that it, there's actually twisting because it gets cut probably at at this level right around here but you see that it actually uh, does work so it is a pretty crazy form but I mean if we got into things that are curving in two directions it probably uh, there's probably a certain point where Revit will really start having issues and it's also questionable with a form this complex how much that this information would actually be accurate uh, for how you would actually have to build it but uh, it's a pretty good start, and you can. It's really uh, interesting with a lot more flexibility in the modeling in order to move it in. And then, obviously, here you already have a floor plan now that you bring it into Revit. So it's a uh, kind of utilizing Rhino for what it's good at, which is uh, conceptual modeling and unique forms, and using Revit for what it's good at, which is setting up building information models and and uh, having organized set drawings and everything. So. It's kind of utilizing the both both of the best of both worlds. Um, so uh, I don't know. Do you guys have uh, any questions or anything else? Uh, want to you, anything you would like to see or uh, see how it's done or any ideas of what you'd like? Um, so uh, here you'd go. Um, you could do a, a duplicate view, um, but here you would um, actually just where did Dini go? Damn, he's the Revit expert. See over there? No. <laughs> um, this is this may not be the best way, but I can show you a way. Um, uh, you can edit these properties right here, um, and you'll see the actual. Uh, Hmm. Where does it show which? There's some place where you're able to uh, actually show what the uh, what the level is, uh, but yeah, let me see here. I wonder if uh, we go into. I'm sure that I'm sure there's an easy way to do it. I'm actually not sure why it uh, hasn't been done automatically. Actually, once you set up uh, once you set up the levels, it should be done automatically.
So you could try setting up uh, a new view. I don't know where the uh, level is, but uh, if you guys are uh, all done, you feel free to, to head out right now. But um, we're uh, tr try and figure this out. Uh, once uh, Demi gets back here, he'll show you. He he has a he, he's a revenue.